So we normally pass the hat, and we do this to help to cover some of our costs, but tonight we're actually passing the hat to support something that is very near and dear to our hearts, and that's the SF Catalyst. Um, the Catalyst is a play space uh, that, you know, it's a very expensive city. Uh, we're, sometimes uh, we don't have as many options as we would like, and so we need to support the options that we do have. Um, so this money is going to go and help support the Catalyst space. There are lots of different events happening over the course of the weekend there. Um, I'll read off some of them, but visit leatheralliance.org to find out more information about the Catalyst. So this is going to go, the buckets are going to be passed back, and by buckets we mean repurposed water, so recycle. Um, and people will have to make their way back there. Um, so uh, in addition to supporting Catalyst, you know, over the weekend and certainly well into the rest of the year, please support our businesses, our kinky businesses, our, our spaces, Mr. S. Uh, wicked grounds, the bars, play spaces. Please keep continue to support them. Um, not only this weekend, but into the rest of the year. Uh, and then, if you help to set up the chairs, uh, if you help to like kind of coordinate the space, please stand up so that we can say thank you very much for all of your help. Um, so, again, lots going on. Uh, starting tonight, I uh, wanted to call out that Dirty Alley at the Powerhouse is hosted by the Mr. S crew. Um, certainly, they know a few things about being dirty. Um, so if you would like to uh, go, it's uh, starting at 9 and going through 2 a.m. So join, uh, join everybody down at the Powerhouse. Friday, again, these are some of the events. If you would like to know more events, there are many different calendars, Races Bar, um, Leather Alliance, cal there are a lot of different places to find out a lot of events. Downstairs in, in Mr. Rest is great. Uh, Friday's Exiles All Gender event at the Center for Sex and Culture. Saturday, uh, Golden Gate Guards, Leather Cruise, 15 Association Play Party at the Catalyst, Folsom Eve Party at SF Citadel. Um, Sunday, obviously Folsom, but also the Catalyst is open has an open social and play party from noon to nine. So um, if you're looking for spaces, there are lots of them. Um, ask your friends, ask around. There are definitely places to go and enjoy. Um, and then last thing I'm going to say, uh, how many of you know have been to Folsom and been to the coat check or in clothing check booth that LDG has done in the past? So um, for the past several years, during both uh, Dory Alley and for Folsom, LDG and the many volunteers that support LDG go and help to run the clothing check. So, you know, attractive men, women come up to you, strip in front of you, and they pay you. So if you would like to be a part of that, um, it is actually fun, and it's also a great place to be out of the shade. Uh, we're looking for a few more volunteers and a few more people to help support. Come talk to myself. Come talk to Al. Um, we're looking for people to help out with the end shift, so 430 to 630. Um, we really appreciate your support and help, um, and to anybody on Facebook as well. Um, and so any other questions, please let me know. Um, if you have any feedback, please email me. We're always looking to see how we can make this better, how we can make this more for everybody that's here involved, anyone that's online. Um, we're always looking to see what we can do. Um, and to that fact, uh, Donald's going to actually talk about what's going on for the next couple months and kind of into the next year. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Thank you, Ryan. Uh, and for those of you that don't know, I don't think I mentioned this before, my name's Donal. I'm the Programs Director for the Leatherman's Discussion Group. And I just want to, want to mention real quick, because we're coming up to nine now, we'll get back to Mark. Um, next month, we've got Richard Sprout talking about our fantastic mentorship program, uh, which begins in January, but the sign-up process happens, uh, I think, in December. Um, and he's going to tell you all about that, and we're probably going to have a couple of people talking about their experiences and how, how great that's been. So um, if you can't come, then watch online and um, you know, give some thought to either contributing as a mentor, or if you need to feel like you need a uh, helping hand to explore the, the King scene, um, being a mentee. Um, month after that, we've got um, a really cool guy talking about accessibility and a particular um, kinky sex with deaf guys. So you could brush up on your sign language to, for, for all kinds of um, vocabulary you wouldn't normally get in a sign language class. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's going to be fantastic. Uh, we're doing chastity in the new year, and we're going to have Mr. S doing a leather makeover class. I've just confirmed that this evening with, uh, with John downstairs. That's going to happen in March. Um, lots of exciting things on the way, uh, so please keep coming back. And now I'm going to hand back over to Mark. Thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, we'll
going to go through some uh, some demos now, and uh, once again, if you have any questions as we go along, just stop me, um, and or, or just shout it out, and I'll stop and try to answer your question. Uh, any questions I left off from last time you want to ask before we get started? Okay, what's going to happen for the next 34 minutes is I'm going to do some karate play demos <laughs> on Roger, and then... <laughs> Uh, and then um, when there's about 15 minutes left, then we'll wrap it all up. Anybody, anybody wants to come up and experience it, I will try to take you out. The only thing I ask is when you come up, um, the questions that I want to actually uh, ask are, do you have any medical problems that you need? Are you hydrated? Um, are there any health concerns I need to be aware of? Um, so when I, when I just say, you know, is there anything I should know, just let me know at that time. So, alrighty. So let's talk about carotid play. Most people realize that you have carotid arteries. You take your earlobe, go down about a quarter inch and then go in like a quarter inch and push in. You'll be able to pull your carotid arteries. Now, Having said that, does everybody realize also you have carotid arteries in the back of your neck? So what happens is 90% of the oxygen going to your brain um, from the heart travels up your arteries here. But since you also have arteries right here, you sometimes have to block those in order to take somebody out. Uh -huh. <laughs> stubborn. Uh, so, what I do, and, and my background in karate play, I, uh, a long time ago, decades, I got my third degree black belt in Taekwondo. So, I use the, the interlocking method most of the time if somebody's very hard to take out. And that's where I actually have my arm, the bicep and forearm, under his neck, pressing on carotids, and then I'll do a cross pattern here. Most of the time I don't do the locking, most of the time this will work. So, when I do this, what I do is I'm actually putting, can everybody see? Uh, I'm actually putting the elbow right under his chin, but I'm not pressing on his Adam's apple, or his trachea. There's a space right there. And I'm not pressing on it. Now what happens if you do press on that, they're going to make a gurgling sound. <laughs> and if they do, you need to restart your, your, the way you're doing it because you actually are putting that crimp on that. Um, you can also do carotid play by simply sitting somebody down. And we'll start off this way. Just take, and I'm going to always support his head with my other hand. I'm going to press on the carotids. Again, I'm using this, and I'm not pressing on the trachea. So, you're right above the Adam's apple right now? I'm right above the, I'm right under the chin, above the Adam's apple. Now, this doesn't work a lot with a lot of people because your hands are not big enough on some people. So, <laughs> so what you have to do that. You can use a belt, you can use a tie. And I just have to have one of my favorite devices here. An old pair of pantyhose. Or a medium. Dark colored, my, my style. So, <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this under his chin, and I'm going to cross it over. It doesn't because it's above it, it's above the Adam's apple. His, his Adam's apple's here. Right everybody can see uh -huh. his Adam's apple's here. 
And this is the bug is Adam's apple. So, so that's why I said, you know, if you have somebody who, if you're a smaller top and they're a larger bottom, uh, or if they have a back injury or whatever, you can always sit them in a chair and you can sit behind them. You can sit them on the floor and, or, and you can sit behind them on the sofa. You can always work out the dynamics if you want to do it. You can lay them down on the floor and do it laying on the floor. You could also, and we, we haven't touched upon suffocation because we're running out of time, we always do. Uh, this class can last probably four hours if we wanted to. But, um, so, but we're talking about karate play now. So I'm gonna go ahead and have him stand up and have him turn this way. And what we'll to do it twice so everybody can sit. <laughs> so I'm gonna have him spread his legs apart. I love saying that spread. Him. And then I'm going to actually do Notice that I'm not going to let him stand up by himself because he hasn't gotten full control of his entire muscles back yet. So I'm going to hold him up and also covers up a problem I'm having in front of myself. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not a problem. It's an issue maybe at times. Um, so um, it can happen very quickly uh, when you take somebody out like that. How often can you go again? You can go, you know, five or ten. You know, five or ten times. What happens is, the more you do it, the longer period of time it takes. And if they're prone to headaches, they'll actually get headaches. So, be connected with your 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 the person you're playing with and ask them, how are you doing? Oh yeah. Now we talked about a reboot earlier, and how you feel like you're you're totally relaxed now. Did that happen? <laughs> what, what does it become harder each, uh, uh, the more times you, you, you do it to the person? Well, what happens is, is the problem is that you're, you're, you're doing it so many times that, that they're going down and out, and your body adjusts to lot, the, the lack of you know, the oxygen in the blood going to the brain. So your body adjusts and says, you don't need that much. Uh, it's kind of like if you, does anybody here go scuba diving a lot? You actually have the ability to hold your breath a longer period than most people. Mm -hmm. So, um, so. <clears throat> and by the way, I have a bad knee, so if you hurt my knee, I'm going to scream. You won't remember, but I'll scream. <laughs> So, I mean, it can be done very easily. And what, and what I do in my classes, I have to actually close my eyes so I can just connect and feel him. That's what I do. It may not work for you, but that's what I have to do. I have a large Adam's apple drink. Someone someone who's going to choke me out has to be careful of. I mean, you said it goes to the crook, but is it? You know, you, your Adam's apple is still, there's still mm -hmm. enough space under your, your, your jawline. Do it. You said that you're closing your eyes, but are you listening for anything particular? Are you? you, you I'm you're listening to everything. I, I'm listening to everything he, he he's doing. Okay. I'm also feeling everything he's doing. If his arms twitching, 
if, he, if his legs are going numb or limp, I know that. Um, you know, I, when I'm holding like this, we're one. Um, when, when I play with somebody at, whether it's flogging, you know, also this to a certain extent, when they, when they go out, I feel myself getting lightheaded too because that's the connection, that's the, you know, that's the energy. It seems like if you line up their chin with your elbow, like the point of their, your elbow, then you're not doing any right. like, physical exactly. damage. Right, your elbow should be lined up with like their with chin. Their nose and chin. Right. Yeah. Unless they've broken their nose and their nose may be over here. <laughs> 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 I, I, just, I, hope I, don't, I want to point something out that you're doing but haven't vocalized. I think it's important to say it out loud. Is that the pressure that you're putting is slow, steady, and even? It's not murky jerky, it's not going back right. and forth. And uh, that not only helps them go out, but also is much safer than right. going back and forth. When you're not squeezing them quickly and hard, yeah. it's a slow, steady pressure that builds, which you're doing wonderfully, but I just want to focus. Right, and what happens if you do it the jerky manner? It allows a person also to, to uh, become excited, a lot of anxiety, and it also will, because the pressure is increasing and decreasing, headaches. <clears throat> So if my bicep is not as big and I don't have a double black belt, can I use a hand color? You can. I'm trying to do one of those start raising their own bicep. Make sure it's the right color, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure they're doing that. There's a color. That's like in the hanky pose when it's not for the breath of the plate, you know. You can always make one. Now I'm going to do it. Thank you. 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 Okay. I do, when, on, on people who actually have either rolling carotids, where if, if, you, if you press, like they roll forward or they can roll backwards, uh, or if they're very deep, because some people have bigger necks and their carotid arteries are... So I mean, what happens is you need to not only impede that, you also need to shut this off back here, and that's why I use the interlock um, if that doesn't work. So. But most of the time, this will work. If it doesn't, then I do this. Question. Um, why is it that when you're doing this, his hands do not reach for you to try to make you stop when, whereas when you were trying to suffocate him, at some point, the person would reach, I mean, his hands would reach for you to try to stop you. Maybe it's why? best you ask him. But I have my... I have my I have my idea, and my idea is because I'm holding him, and there's a connection there, and then there's a closeness there, and there's an energy there. Um, but with him, you know, he, he may have another reason why he's not doing it. And also with karate play, it happens a lot more quickly. Yeah, it's not drawn out. It's not, it's not drawn out. <laughs> but for the most part, it's, it's the fact that it's not something that's physiological. He, he feels safe. Yeah. And it was much quicker than I thought it was going to be. Well, I think physiologically what's happening is like you're not getting that immediate oxygen delivery to the brain, so it's sort of like a, like a hypoxic right. moment where right. you don't have as much, and so it kind of, it's almost like getting up from a seated position really quickly, like Mark right. was saying, or, you know, it's like a moment of like a little stars and blackness and then you come back, but you're not going to be very... Yeah, you don't have to still breathe. You don't have to still breathe. Right, right, right. You can still breathe. It's not it's just, like it's, it's right. Not I mean, he, he's, he's still breathing, so <laughs> there's more of a there's more of a natural okay. panic in, in not having air right. compared to this a panic of your right. your blood. Flow. Any other questions? So my next question is: How many people want to experience? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. We're gonna go ahead and uh, uh, before we wrap that up, I do want to say, you know, you guys are lucky here in San Francisco to have a group like this. Support it and embrace it and become a part of it. You know, the the group is only as strong as, as the community. And you guys have a very strong community, you have a very strong group here. I'm always impressed when I hear the presentations and, and the times I've done it. Um, so you guys are remarkable, so thank you.
So, <laughs> so do anybody want to experience and you want to actually see uh, what happens? Before, before we go though, uh, I want to ask Roger, what were you feeling with when you were going out and you coming to? It just went so quick, you know. I, I started feeling like light on the beat, right? So it's going down to the and the next thing I know, I, I don't know, like cartoon characters from the cartoon. Did you see stars or did you no. see birdies? <laughs> Tweety. Uh, uh, yes, cartoon. <laughs> Tweety. <laughs> um, I'll try it. Okay. So if you want, if you want to try it, just line up over here on this side and we'll show you.